Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to the second prep video for this series, Developing a Survival Game. In this video, we'll talk about choices regarding the first person camera. So, there are a few different types of first person cameras that we can use. First, we have the standard camera. Please note the quotes here. And the standard camera is the floating arms with no legs. We have a weapon in our hands. We have two pairs of arms. We see this in games like Skyrim, when you don't mod it out, in games like Half-Life. And then we have what some people call the true first-person camera. And the true first-person camera is the full body. And this is what we'll be using in this series, by the way. And we see it in games like Mirror's Edge and in Cyberpunk 2077. And there is an alternative first person camera as well that falls between these two. And that is the full body minus the head. And you'll sometimes see this available. And the reason for this is due to animation types. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. So how do you pick between the versions? Well, you have to consider two things. And those two factors are resources and the animations that you plan to use or have access to. Now, because this project is relatively, and that probably should actually be in quotes, simple, we do not need to be overly concerned with resources. However, for other projects, you will need to make this determination on your own and to assess what makes the most sense for what you are doing. Now, as for animations, well, there's a lot of things we need to discuss here. First, animations from a first person perspective are very different than animations from a third person perspective. Think about the old aiming down the sights in games. It kind of feels like you're having the rifle from the center of your chest, and it isn't really accurate, but the only way to get that animation to work correctly in the game was to have it move that way. Um, you see the same thing with, you know, swinging a sword in a certain game. You know, if we use the third person animation, it wouldn't look good in first person. Now, some games do use both animation sets. So for example, if you have a game where you're in first person, you might have first person animations for the player, but all the NPCs will have third person perspective based animations. So sometimes you will see a mix and match combo or if a game where you can go from first to third person, you might actually find that the animation types change between the perspective the player is in. And as I said, what often looks good in third person will not look good in first person. So you need to be mindful of your animation set and what you're using. You also need to consider when you're attaching the camera for true first person, how the camera attaches to the body and how the animations might affect the camera. So for example, if the character is standing still and there's that idle breathing animation where the chest is rising and falling and the head is moving, you know, the camera is going to move with that. And depending on how severe that movement is, it can be very, well, nauseating. It can cause issues for the player. It can cause issues for the immersion in the game. So you need to be mindful of this, especially when you're considering third person. And as I mentioned on the last slide, there's that in-between state. Well, when you have no head, you're not really worried about animations bobbing the head up and down. So that is one of the reasons why some people use, well, we'll have the body, but no head. So we don't have to worry about how the animations affect where the camera is most likely going to be rooted. And finally, for this project, while I've said all these things about the difference between third person and first person animations, we will be using at the start, at the very least, third person animations simply because, well, the player is not often going to be looking down at their body when they're moving. And if they are, the third person animations in this case actually work fine. Um, there might be better first person walking animations or running animations out there, but they work fine. And if you have access to those sort of animations, feel free to use them. 
That said, as a reminder, this series has been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors like Random Number Generator. And if you want to help out this channel, consider becoming a sponsor on Patreon. Or hitting that like and subscribe button down below so you know when the next video is out. All of that said, let's move on to the actual tutorial.